Hello and welcome to the Business Automated Show, episode four. I cannot believe it's shifted so quickly. In this episode, we're going to be talking very, very specifically about reoccurring cyclic, you could say monthly subscriptions and payments from your automated online payment systems. My name is Suki Wahiwala. I'm actually the chairman of the Wahiwala Group of Companies, and my co host is Jatinda Balaha, the founder of the absolutely powerful Big Fanta and the whole group that goes with it within the web development section. Jatinda! Hello, Suki. Hello, everybody. I'm Jatinda, and welcome to this episode. Thank you very much, everybody. And this episode has been made possible by the sponsorship of salesmasterhub.com, which is the ultimate CRM system for coaches, mentors, single man band businesses, and small to medium sized companies. So please do check it out, have a look below, there's a link, click through and have a look and become a member, there's a free 14 day trial. So Jatinda, just a little thought to ourselves. Most people, when they're working with actually their online systems, they just kind of, we covered it in series, I think it was episode three, how to connect automated systems um, with invoicing structures, with online virtual um, diaries and automations. How much difference does it, does it actually make by having a system that can consistently, cyclically, like a subscription, take payment? Does that increase or decrease sales? So that's a very good question, Suki, and it all depends on the kind of service that you're providing or, or the product or um, whether it's a membership site or whether it's a continuous service that you provide. Um, and really based, it's really based on, on your industry and obviously your product offering. And uh, depending on the product offerings, using a subscription-based uh, model is a lot better because you know you kind of trigger the initial payment and then it just continuously takes a payment on a on a monthly weekly yearly dual monthly cycle whatever you set it up to do oh wow so actually if i hop back to some of the companies that we've grown ourselves over the years to build and make uh, multiple million companies we've just to share with yourself we're starting to morph all of those companies into subscription-based processes so that the companies are not necessarily about individual purchases anymore it's more about a service partner now that is a, a big trend but Chitinda, what do you think the coaches or the small man band businesses would benefit how would they benefit from actually having a what we classify as a subscription-based process yeah, so like if we took coaches uh, as an example, um, what they what what they have to one of the things they have to do is shift from this mindset of charging per hour and try to create packages, right? And uh, what uh, the beauty of that is that they can actually then create a package and say that you know um, it's like a twelve week program, or it could be a six week program, um, and you put your package together and say these are the things you're gonna get every month in regards to your growth in your personal development journey, as an example. Or if you're then like a social media company or your web design company or something, then you can set certain packages together, which would be, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z for you on social media. We're gonna be doing X, Y, and Z for you on video or whatever. And then you could regularly do that. Um, so it's quite clear to the client what they're gonna be getting on a regular basis. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Jatinda. That, thanks very much for that. Now, in our own group and companies and my own mentees, we're talking to them all the time by explaining, um, um, you may be listening to this now, but we're talking to you all the time to try to create what Jatinda was talking about, a, a group of trainings that are online or even what we call the social platforms that people can get involved and get maybe more on Q&A with yourself. But actually, by bundling them all together and offering it out as a single singular price, this basically makes, instead of it being a three, four thousand pound purchase up front, it makes it a monthly fee, which tends to keep it a bit easier to be maintained. And also it stops the customer base from becoming quite stale, if you understand where I'm coming from, team. So what happens is, is that your client can rely on you quicker. They can pick up the phone. You won't need to be worried about, oh my goodness, I am being uh, constantly hounded by a client. Uh, they want so much from me because some of your clients are going to work need less time and some of them already need more time. So with the subscription balance, with a subscription based, subscription based policy, your balance will be far superior. Now, I can only share from our own um, experiences here, Jatinda, with ourselves that subscription is the way forward. I mean, if we look at Apple as an organization, 
you can clearly see that they've actually got 22%, that was last year's, 2019's explanation, 22% of their global revenues are subscription-based now. You know, the Netflix style, the Apple, Apple TV, the Apple Music, et cetera, et cetera, the Apple TV Plus, sorry, um, and all of those things. So this trend is likely to follow within, I would say, within smaller businesses as well, isn't it? It certainly looks like that. It looks that way. I um, mean, I think it is going to happen because um, if you look at, like you said, look at what is happening in the industry. You got the Netflix model. You got Apple doing that, um, and, and you're getting um, into a, a space now where it is becoming a lot more packaged, um, and it just means that it's a lot more clearer delivery. And the, the whole thing about automation and using the internet is that it allows you to do that. You know, it makes it easy. And and one of the beauties of it is that that kind of model is something that you can scale. So if you set up your business in such a way where, you know, you say we got monthly uh, coaching, for example, going on, uh, you know, join uh, our program, you get access to the private group, that group can grow. And you could be talking and coaching on a, a particular uh, topic each month or each week or however you set that up and you could scale it. So you could potentially be, you know, have good prices, but you could have a lot of people on there and it could still become something that becomes um, something for you to sustain as a, a, as a proper business as well. That's such a valid point. Now, coming back to the salesmasterhub.com, there is a feature which we showed, I believe, in episode two, which is called the Client Hub. It's like a, a client profiling system there, which allows us allows the individual organization to communicate directly with each one of the clients. Now, if there was a subscription, the, would you believe that there would be actually less reluctancy from an owner to attend that client hub for free, in essence, because it's a part of the cycle, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, if, it's, if it's automated, if, the, if these payments are going out, um, you kind of know in the back of your mind that that's the service you're going to get. So, uh, the idea is that if you are on a subscription, you, you are going to act towards bettering yourself in whatever you're taking uh, part in. So it's it's just as uh, much, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, a responsibility of the client as it is on the uh, provider to make sure that you have got this synergy going on and making sure that you are actually taking up the services and acting towards it. And if you know there's a membership going out every month, um, it probably it probably kicks you into action a bit as well because you think you're going to get this done. There's a payment going to go out. Uh, and, and there's pros and cons to it because you could also forget that there's a payment going on. But um, so it's a sense also, of accountability, isn't it? Really? That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Both ends, both from you as being the service provider using yeah. the Salesmaster Hub and also as the customer paying for your subscription as well. That's Wonderful. Right. Yeah. So just to move forward, if I can. Now, if I'm correct, there are three particular portals that we would suggest to integrate with the Sales Master Hub at some format and point. Now, the first one being PayPal, second being Stripe. We've covered them in the last episode, episode three, with the payment portal connections. But the third one we didn't cover on purpose because it was for today in this session, and it was basically go cardless. So in order, um, is it okay if you can just talk to us? Let's cover a couple of things with the PayPal and the benefits of it, but also show us on the screen, the benefits and pros and cons. So the question I would say is that I found that PayPal is very much an organization where once people have signed up to this subscription session, that means we can create a subscription, which we're going to show you in a moment, a subscription section where you set up a subscription for a client and they can charge monthly. People tend to cancel that a lot less because they know that it's gone through PayPal and they've been through it themselves personally. Do you agree with that? Yes, definitely. So, um, yeah, that's the advantage. I mean, PayPal is uh, it is trusted. I mean, it's been around for for a long mm. time. Um, it, it has got some credibility to it. Uh, so it's a it's a trusted um, method of payment, and they have got things built into it which does protect you. So it's a it's a good um, initial system that can be used to pretty much get going. It's it's very good for. Um, it's like easy, you know, you could go to paypal.com, for example, you just sign up, you create an account, personal or business. And um, it's as easy as going into it to create a subscription button, uh, which I can run you through on how to do that. You create a subscription yeah. button, which then you can, you know, um, send the link out to your customer or you could put it on a web page. 
and they click this button, it goes to PayPal, you put your details in and it's almost like setting up a standing order. Uh, so you trigger the payment and then PayPal will automatically process the payment on a monthly or, or whatever you set it up monthly or yearly basis. So wow, that's amazing. That. Can we see that now then? Yeah? Yeah, sure. Thank if you. you. Have a look at the screen. Um, right. In order to create a subscription button in PayPal, what you need to do is log into your account, go to this top bit here and then go to account settings, then click on website payments. And you will see this option here, which says PayPal buttons. Just click on update. From here, you've got a few different options you can select. So if we want to set up a reoccurring payment, you click on this one here, which says subscribe. And it says set up reoccurring charges of the same amount for your goods or services. Just click on that. And basically you'll be presented with a box like this. And in here you would name your uh, product consultancy, for example. Uh, you can select your currency. Um, then you basically enter the amount here. So say it was £97 a month. And then you would select the billing cycle. So it could be a month, two months. It can be a day, a week. So say it was a month, you say, you say once a month. And then you can set how long you want the cycles to continue. So it can be continuous forever. So it'll never stop or you can stop it after, let's say, 12 months. So say if you had like a... Um, a purchase which you needed to be paid for over 12 months then you can select 12 months on there else you could just leave it as never that's just the basic settings after you've done those basic ones there's a few other options which you can go through and it's quite self-explanatory this third one is maybe important so you can take people to like a thank you page for example after you've done after they have made the payment um, or you could leave it blank like this if you, then you basically click on create button and you get two um, tabs like this. Now, all you really need to do is just select this code. And if you copy and then paste this and embed it into your website, you will get a, a button that looks like this. If you want to send people an email, then you click on email and you take the URL. And you can, again, attach that to a button that you've created, or you can just put it in the email and send it across to them. And if you run that URL, Basically, you will see it will take them to a checkout page that looks at something like this. Obviously, I'm lo logged in at the moment, so you're going to see my one. But basically, the user can log in from there and make the payment on PayPal for reoccurring payments. Now, you can basically take this type of a link and put it inside your Sales Master Hub or any other CRM system you got or any invoice you create. Just add it there. When people click on it, it'll basically activate paypal so you can do the reoccurring payments wow that's that was so easy to see that was thank you very much for that tinder that was really helpful now i'm going to speedily go into um, i think the second uh, medium that we're thinking about as a being a payment portal and partner is stripe now we've covered in the last session in episode three the differences between uh, all the three mediums or the two mediums at the time but with stripe the difference is that there isn't that assurity of spend because with paypal we just covered a moment ago was specifically about um if there is a refund issue you just go back to paypal and they take their return the money and then they chase it from the actual lender uh the, the purchaser and the buyer and the, the source but with stripe it's not quite the same um, basically the, the the onus is always on the vendor so there's always going to be that clawback facilitation if it's a fraudulent uh, payment, et cetera, which is virtually zero in PayPal. So why would one use Stripe, if I can just share, because of the fact of the ease of integration without having to re-log into, like we had to do just a moment ago with PayPal, logging into the PayPal account in anybody's system. So with Stripe, it becomes seamless. So is it okay, Jatin, if you just show us the Stripe seamless integration? So the cycles can be done within Stripe and, and show sequence. Can you show us it now? Yeah, sure. So um, I just wanted to quickly say on the point of uh, PayPal, it's it's one of those things where um, you, you you can log in as you know into your account, and if there's a subscription, you can switch it off from there as well. If something does happen in regards to fraud, uh, you can get in touch with PayPal direct, and they will like open up a, a dispute around that. And you know they got they want evidence, and you can base it. And so you're quite protected to do that. Mm -hmm. um, when you're using Stripe, now, like you said, the Stripe is something that's uh, 
allows you to take credit card uh, payments quite easily. Mm -hmm. In regards to its kind of fee structure, it's very similar to PayPal. There's not much difference there. Um, and it's got a bit more uh, risk associated to it because they're dealing with credit cards. So what happens is if there is a payment that isn't legit, um, uh, I mean, Stripe has things in place which tries to minimize that, but sometimes something can filter through. Um, it, it's kind of... Um, Broad protection. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, it, you know, there is a, a chargeback. Yeah. They, you know, if the, if it's gone wrong, there could be a chargeback on it, which then could potentially dig into your your initial profits. But yeah, it's um again, and with the, with Stripe is a bit more uh a, a bit more technical in regards to its setup with um in in regards to PayPal. Um, so you have to do a few more extra things in order to work it with uh, with Stripe. And I'll show you now a, a few things that you can do in regards to that. Thank you. And just before we go into that uh, explanation, before you share it, your screen. Um, with Stripe, the, the actual end result is more seamless. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So with PayPal, for example, you know, um, it generally asks you to log into the PayPal account before the transaction is processed. With Stripe, it's more integrated so that you don't really see that it's processed by Stripe. It seems to be more seamless. So, you, you know, it might get a pop-up and you put your details in and it gets processed. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot cleaner. Um, Got it. Yeah, so taking reoccurring payments with Stripes is a lot more uh, difficult than something like PayPal, for example. With Stripe, you have to actually set up API connections. So it's a bit more advanced for this video, but basically you would need some sort of plugin or a mobile app device or uh, a feature that plugs into your CRM system. And then you can connect that up to Stripe so that you can take uh, reoccurring payments. So that one will save for another time but um, it is possible to take recurring payments and we'll do another video at some stage on how that can be done with a bit more advanced setup required. Well, this brings us forward forward to our final integration. Now, this is something completely different. This is gocardless.com. The difference between gocardless.com integration into the salesmasterhub.com is it empowers, just in case you're thinking, why would I use the third element? The third element basically is direct debit, which is also covered by a guarantee. Um, this saves both the vendor and the customer at the same time. So it's, it's kind of like a hybrid of both of them. The, th the downside it is, is, is that it doesn't work as flexible as using a credit card. You need a bank account for it. Um, but it's really, really simple, really easy. Now, just to give some outline, um, just ahead, head of the head, that basically you'd have to have eight, to get a, a direct license for direct debit, you'd need a multiple million pound turnover and also about 800 payments coming in or out every single month. So what happened is, is that GoCardless partnered with RBS in the earlier days. Now they're independent and run their own organization because of the way it works. And they basically partnered and aggregated a group of customers who all wanted to use direct debit and aggregated them over 800 and they became the single partner. So that was a really clever move. But the difference between GoCardless and the others is their fees are considerably cheaper. So they were down to just 1% or two pounds maximum when GoCardless first hit the market. This meant that they hoovered up a very vast amount of the company, of the country's spend and the world spend. So a very stable platform, very easy once integrated. If I hand it back to yourself, Jatinda, um, the pros and cons of using GoCardless over the other two. Yeah, sure, Suki. Um, yeah, so the, the GoCardless element is designed more around direct debits. And um, one of the reasons for that, I, I uh, would imagine, was because when you, you, you send the invoices to your client, um, a lot of people still to this day do a bank transfer. Um, and they transfer the money over to your account or they do a direct debit or standing orders and things like that. Mm -hmm. So to address this, Go Cardless basically created a system where um, you could create an account with them and within uh, Go Cardless, you can connect your bank account, for example, and you can create subscription or single payment um, links even, a bit like PayPal in terms of creating uh, buttons that can be done. And then again, you can um, you know integrate those links onto uh, a button on your website or an email and when somebody clicks on it it opens up the gold cardless portal and allows you to put debit card details in so it's connected straight to your bank account and, and allows you to process payments that way and it will trigger the automatic 
reoccurring subscriptions, as you said it in the system anyway. So but that's, in that that's, regard, it's really good. But that's really clever. Sorry to over talk you there, but that's really clever. So that means basically we're moving to another, another level of reduction of cost of transaction uh, and seamlessness. Brilliant. Could we possibly see that this time around again and just show us how to set that up within the system, if that's okay? Yeah, sure, Suki. Okay. So I'll run you through um, how it can be set up in uh, Gold Cardless. So to take payments with Gold Cardless on a recurring basis, what you need to do is log into your Gold Cardless account. And then once you're logged into the dashboard, you want to go down to the side where it says plans. When you're in plans, you want to go to create plan. And you give this a name. So it could be um, monthly coaching, for example. You say how much that's going to be. Just say 497. You select your currency. Uh, the interval, is that going to be weekly or monthly? Uh, you want to take payments as soon as possible or take payments at a certain uh, day of the month. We just leave that as it is and continue to further noticed. And basically, you could create like a redirect link as well, like a thank you page after payments being done, for example, and you create that link. Now, when that's been created, all you have to do is just click into it, click on the invite to uh, invite customers link and you get this uh, a link like this you can either click on email and send them a direct link through email or you click on uh, the link button and you get this URL which you can copy and then what you could do you can either add this as a button to uh, a page on your website or you could send it in an email or connect it to um, a link and then when they click on it you get this basically come up and the customer fills in their details and this allows them to set up a direct debit in, with their bank account so this payment would get taken monthly um, through through direct debit services simple as that now that was really easy thank you very much Dinda, for going through that with reference to the integration uh, with go cardless so now just to synopsize we've covered three clear mediums of integration within the salesmasterhub.com and my suggestion in a very strong way is to at least go and try. Please check the link below and go and try the 14-day trial within salesmasterhub.com and be surprised at how it can change your business. The main key here is to automate the tasks that really are time-consuming and that doesn't necessarily, they don't necessarily give you the return on invested money. So, Jatinda, are there any last few words you'd like to share with reference to the team and obviously with all amazing screens and stuff they've just seen now and how to integrate it with their Sales Master Hub? Uh, any other thoughts? Yeah, sure. So um, it's, it's mainly a case of, you know, sometimes people might get overwhelmed with technology and things like that. But the reality is that once you set it up and you've um, memorized that path on what you need to do as a, as a workflow or process, it becomes, uh, you know, becomes habit, it becomes a part of your process. So it's not then going to be taking up time. It becomes very efficient um, once you've kind of initially set it up and put it into place. So once that's done, then it just makes your life easier. So that's what we want with automation is to make our, uh, do the hard work initially and then make your life easy in regards to that. That, that, is, that is the secret to success right there in, the, in a capsule. So my suggestion is, I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed this another episode, episode four, talking about reoccurring payments and cyclic payments. I really, really wish that you actually enjoyed and ever made it found it very easy to integrate with your systems whatever your system you're using if you would like to trial sales master it's down below but please subscribe to the channel and we continually with your support actually produce more and more of this sort of content that is out there to help you consistently and please subscribe please comment and i'd really appreciate if you could like it and share with other people you think who are growing uh, like yourself so it's uh, an end another wrap of a brilliant brilliant episode talking about reoccurring payments uh, and thank you very much to Tinder. Thank you very much, Suki. And I hope you guys um, find that of value. And let us know if you've got any questions and we'll get back to you as, as in the comments below.